Good morning, YouTube friends. It's Dale from whatever the weather may be. I decided to take a little walk, a different walk home from my little post office job this morning. And the first thing that I came across was this little monument here. This is in front of our legion. I've walked by it a million times and never even really noticed it was there. So it has <coughs> the dates of the Great Wars and the names of the fallen comrades from this district. I recognize quite a few names on this list. It's very nice. So, I'm just going to take a different walk home. There's our municipal, municipality building. I apologize, the sun's quite bright. Over here is our, our museum. And I'll just walk this way for a minute. The museum is the old um, train station in front of the grain elevator as well as a school. It's one of the original schools in this town. Um, it was my intention to take take a, my camera through here th this year and go through the museum, share it with you, but I didn't get around to it. So next year, the museum is only open in the summertime from May to September, or actually May till August. So I missed it but I'll get it another time. So the little schoolhouse is there with the schoolyard. It's got a, an outhouse and a fenced in yard. And then the train station, which is kind of nice because most towns, most prairie towns in Canada no longer have great elevators, nor do they have train stations. They've removed, <clears throat> they've removed the buildings completely. We're lucky to still have both. Um, there's still a lot of them being taken down. They become a, a terrible fire hazard. The grain elevators do um, when they get older and not being used because of course there still is remnants of grain and and things like that and the buildings get old. So, oops, I just oh, fell on my face. I don't know if you can hear the geese. Can you hear them? They are coming in every day, every morning from the north. We have a, a treatment, water treatment lagoon over there. And they're in there by the millions. And as the season continues, it gets deafening over there. There are some, some residential area. There's a little residential area, not that far actually, <clears throat> from that lagoon. And uh, people who live there uh, are bombarded with the noise in spring and fall. But of course in fall, the geese have it quite well actually because they're in the fields eating bits of grain that are left over from harvest. You know, the machines don't get every little last kernel. So you'll be driving past a field and it'll be covered with geese um, feeding on the grain, which is nice. And then they fly over here to the water source at the lagoon or a lake, or a river, whatever they find. But for us, it's the little lagoon. The sun is quite bright. 
so I'll just walk along the prairie here a little bit. It's a beautiful morning. We've had very hot, humid weather the last couple of days. And uh, late yesterday, we had some storms and it cooled down, just beautiful. So now it's like it should be. It's a little humid, but much cooler today. Much, much cooler. And the sun's shining, which is a nice thing. We had a lot of fog the last three days in the morning. And that's, I guess, because of the humidity. We didn't really have a lot of rain. We just had a lot of humidity. But fall is supposed to be cooler. Oh, there's the moon up there. Well, the leaves are starting to turn here, some more than others. I'll be going over to the uh, Fletcher Park with my photography camera and see if I can get some nice fall pictures this year. I got some nice ones last year. But you can see the colors starting to show up. So pretty. I love this time of year. This is my favorite time of the year. And I think most people would say that as well. Fall is just beautiful. Why oh, these geese are loud and we're getting further away from them. They're getting louder. I'm just going to go down this street here. <clears throat> this is called Railroad Street, Railway Street, the street that I'm on because the railroad is right there. And we just missed a train about. 20 minutes ago when I was walking to work the train went by it feels so nice to be walking I haven't done much walking this summer I mean I've, I've walked but I haven't gone for my really long walks because myself and the heat do not agree to get along I get very overheated very quickly. So now I can start going for my long walks again in the mornings, which I love. Somebody's little tractor over there. There's a pretty tree. And the grass is green. I know I've said this a million times, but our grass was nothing. We didn't have grass. It was just um, just a dried mulch on dirt, and it all came back. This tree's losing some leaves. <clears throat> an elm tree. Don't see a lot of elm trees around here. Where we used to live, we were surrounded by elm trees. So I'm getting very excited for next Monday. I've, I don't know if I mentioned it on a video or not. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I've decided to put up an adver advertisement for starting a knitting group and that comes from a, um, a, a long ago dream of mine. I, I always wanted to start uh, a, a yarn shop of my own. <clears throat> that was my, my dream job in my own mind. And I never really got the opportunity to do that. But when I used to think about starting a yarn shop, 
one of the things that I wanted to make sure I did was I wanted to make sure that whatever building I chose to put my yarn shop in, that it had a, a very large picture window at the front, um, possibly facing south. Of course, you know, it had to be perfect. So in that south-facing picture window, it was my intention to set up some sofas and some comfortable chairs, a coffee maker, um, some coffee tables, that kind of thing, with the intention of having a place where knitters and crocheters could meet and sit together and knit or crochet. Just like a community spot where people who did the same kind of thing could meet as a group and do the same thing together. And I, I've always thought about that aspect of of knitting, which is not typically what you think about, because knitting and crocheting are both fairly um, solitude tasks, really. You usually just sit and knit by yourself. But there's been a lot of a lot of research done and a lot of a lot of talk about the benefits of of knitting in a group. Um, Certainly, it's the social aspect, but it's also encouragement for people who are new to the to the uh, activity. You know, perhaps younger people. En encouragement to learn uh, a new task, such as knitting or crocheting. Uh, it's also encouragement to maybe try more challenging patterns. Um, all that kind of thing. You could share supplies, you know. Most of us who have been knitting all our life have way more yarn and needles than we need. And I know my, for myself, I have uh, totes and totes and totes of yarn that I'll never use. Why not give it to somebody who will use it? A beginning knitter who wants to make uh, an afghan or anything like that. So that's my idea. So. I put an advertisement up and I got a lot of response and I was quite surprised because I really didn't think I was going to get that much response. So Monday night, the 23rd, at my house is going to be the first knitting group in our little community and I'm so excited because it's just been something that I've thought of and dreamed of for such a long time and I hope that it's going to be something that as a community we can continue to do together so I'll let you know how that goes in an another video down the line but I'm home now so I think it's time for me to say cheerio and I'm going to go inside and have some breakfast and get my day started. I think my day is going to be uh, working out here in the garden. Once the dew is settled down, it's very, very moist out, as you can see. So thanks for coming for my little morning walk. We'll go for some longer ones in days to come. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.